Oh my god. Oh my god. Team GB's precious metals. Oh, wow, they're heavy as well. Yeah. <laughs> London Olympians back from Paris with bronze, silver, and gold. So my name is Lola Anson and I've just won gold in the women's squad out in Paris. And how does that feel? Pretty, pretty special. Yeah, it's very hard to put it into terms, like what that means. It's been a very long journey. For Lola Anderson, who grew up in Richmond, that journey began 13 years ago, writing a diary entry saying the biggest dream of her life would be to become an Olympian. She thought the note had been thrown away, but her dad kept it and returned it just two months before dying from cancer. And I threw it away because I thought that was just too outlandish. It wasn't going to happen. And I forgot about it. And then seven years later, when my dad um, passed away shortly after, he, he gave me the note back. And he said, you know, this is because I kind of believed that maybe it was a possibility. And if it was, you know, how cool would that be? For me, it's, it's less about missing my dad and more about uh, just appreciating how much parents invest and put in to your kids and their kids before they've even, like, realised themselves what they're capable of. So, yeah. Such a beautiful moment. I mean, how proud would he be of that, do you think? Oh, very, oh, like, hugely proud. I mean, I think he, he would have, yeah, there would have been some tears, but I mean, my mum, you know, she was crying. My older sisters were there. My twin brother was there. Like, my whole family came out and my friends surprised me. They came out on the train with my face on their T-shirts and it was just like the most amazing collection of all of the people you love in one space just there for you. It's. It's, it's like, over again, I keep saying it, but it's overwhelming, yeah. Do you think there could be another child writing a letter to themselves saying, oh. you know, uh, an Olympics in 2032? I mean, I hope so, because I hope that, you know, the kids have been inspired from watching everyone, you know, like, we've, ju not just in our boat, but, and in, in uh, like, the whole of the Team GB, but there are so many athletes from countries all over the world that I hope that people would take inspiration from that. Like, there is talent everywhere you look and it doesn't mean that means it could be within you as well and you just have to try what comes next lola uh a bit of a break yeah i mean today i'm going to keep working on my basketball skills <laughs> and eventually maybe i'll manage to make one shot that would be like an actual win for me another win um, but um then i want to just go around and see my friends spend time with my family we had a barbecue yesterday and then um go on holiday a little holiday somewhere would be nice so somewhere with a beach and then LA 20. Oh, sorry. And then, I, no, no, I, I'm just, are you thinking about, no, no, it's I was, good, yeah. I, don't, I like that, but then are um, you, are you? Yeah, I think LA, I'm not yeah. sure yet. Um, I need to like fully work that out, but in terms of do I feel done, I, I don't feel like I've seen the most of my potential and I know all of my teammates and stuff will probably be having similar thoughts and discussions, but I, I hope we've got a team coming back because it's been a really special one to be part of. Let's see your medals then. So, Got two now. Not bad. <laughs> That's incredible. Noah Williams from Hackney won an individual bronze and silver in the synchronised dive with Tom Daly, who's just announced his retirement. I think it's a bigger achievement for me to individually medal. You know, like obviously Tom in synchro, he's got now a gold, silver, and bronze. But individually, he also was only able to get bronze because that's how good and how hard individual is. So, in terms of achievement, I'd say it's better, but. Synchro is 100% more special, you know, doing it with a friend, with someone, someone to share it with, and also it's my first Olympic medal. So that's how I'd kind of compare them. Synchro is more special, but individual overall is probably better, I think. And now you're here, yeah. inspiring uh, a next to. generous trying, trying to. <laughs> What's it like talking to the kids? It's really nice. They're all super funny. So, I mean, that's why I'm here, like, trying to talk to the kids, get them, not just in diving, but just getting them involved in sport and having fun and it's not like you have to do sports to become an Olympian you can also just do it for fun so that's the main message I'm trying to spread to them yeah you've lost your diving partner I know. what's going to happen in LA 2028 well I mean I don't even know if I'll be there I'll see um I, I need to take a long break you know and decide what's right for me I'm gonna have to get a job at some point I don't know what I'm good at I don't know what I enjoy so yeah. I'll have to figure a lot of stuff out and because it's my Last Olympic Games, I'm done. I've finished my final of a routine. I'm not going back to training to go prepare for competition. So trying to navigate that, that will take a bit of time. Also retiring the country's most successful gymnast, Max Whitlock. Does it feel like a kind of end of an era? Because the, the 2012 Olympians, you were part of that. Yep. Tom Daly was part of that. He's retired as well. Does it feel like a kind of a closing chapter in a way? 
I suppose a little bit, yeah. I think um, all those athletes, with, with Tom, um, with Helen as well, um, who's done uh, four Olympic Games here as well, like following that journey, all going together and doing that long stint. Longevity in sport is hard, really, really hard. And I think we can all look back and think that we, we give that our best shot and we've done longevity in our individual sports. But I think, yeah, I suppose it's a, it's a big end to a, a, a large chapter for, for many people. And I guess the reason why you're here is kind of inspiring the next generation. Yeah. How important is that? Um, for me, it's one of the things that I really kind of took on my shoulders, inspiring the next generation, ever since London 2012, really. It was the slogan of the Games, it was what the Games are all about. And for myself as an individual, but for us as gymnasts, we wanted to kind of see where we can take the sport. And now, at 31 years old, it's my next mission. I'm almost asking people to pile pressure on me, hold me accountable for what I do next. And that's because I want to make an impact or further the impact of what I've had in the sport when it comes to grassroots, helping young children, make sport more accessible, especially gymnastics when it comes to schools, helping teachers deliver better quality gymnastics. Do you think this is the end of you in gymnastics? <laughs> I mean, no, no, not, I mean not, not like competing, but I'm thinking yeah. maybe there might be a young girl called Willow <laughs> who could be good at gymnastics and she might need a coat. <laughs> oh, well, um, to be honest, Willow does, I think it's about six different sports throughout the week. She's mega busy. Of course, gymnastics is one of them. There's no doubt about that. Um, and she's moving up to twice a week as well. So, um, yeah, she does loads of stuff. And I think for me, one of the things that I really fear and hate is the pressure of, of gymnastics on Willow. So I'd never want that. But I uh, almost just want to give her the option of doing as many things, try, try loads of new stuff, um, and then she can pick what she wants to go and do. If that's gymnastics, that's gymnastics. If it's any, any other sport, then that's great too. So many medals, maybe not that many golds. Is that something that you're concerned about, will be looked at? What's, what's the situation there? Definitely not concerned. Um, so the medal range that UK Sport laid out early on was between 50 and 70. So to land at 65, Everyone's thrilled, absolutely thrilled. Um, the range of sports is really important as well. So we're one of the few countries that can invest across a really breadth, really impressive breadth. So we've got 18 different sports, that really matters. We want as many members of the public to watch, witness, enjoy, feel connected to sports. Um, we didn't get as many conversions into gold as sometimes we've seen in the past. So of course, we'll all look at that and see are there areas that were outside of our control or the things we could do better. But you know, having been an athlete for a long time, that's. That's in the nature of sport, always reviewing, always looking to improve, always finding out where it could be better yet. The lottery money goes a lot to elite sports, but also goes to, you know, the community as well. How important is, is that funding? National Lottery has, has transformed so many things through sport, but across communities anyway. So, yes, the national team that we see at Team GB, Paralympics GB, are supported by the National Lottery. But actually, there are so many community projects that are happening all the time through Sports Hall, they're happening through local communities. And I think what's been lovely is this Changemakers program happening this week will also happen the week following the Paralympics. It's all about bringing some of our best athletes back from Paris and filtering them out through their local towns, communities, clubs, swimming pools, wherever they have found their own inspiration, they're giving it back now. And they really want to, they really want to connect to communities and show especially young people what's possible. Do you think Sports facilities, the story has been a sort of in decline slightly in schools, particular with equipment and sometimes, you know, uh, fields being turned into classrooms. How much further do we need to go to have like proper access that everyone has, you know, sports facility? We know how good it is for health. We know how good it is for the social side. We know how good it is for getting people together, community cohesion. It can play a lot in a lot of different ways through society. And I think we all need to, in our various roles and our various influences, do as much as we can, because the very top level of sport doesn't just happen by chance. The very top level of sport happens because communities are thriving. People can find a way through. There's coaches and, and volunteers in all different pockets throughout our towns and, and villages and cities. And we need that to feel healthy. We need that to feel opportunity is there for everyone. And that's what brings people through. So whether it's going to be in your daily life or you want to take it to top level, we need these places to flourish. Visiting a West London sports centre, the Olympians are supporting the Changemaker scheme, showing how sport is for everyone. I have a couple of signatures here, as you can see. Who you got? You got all their signatures? I've got six signatures. How important is it to do sport? It's very good because it keeps you healthy. Motivates me so that I can do better too. And this 
already is a generation inspired. Rags Martel, ITV News, Paddington.